What's up, everybody? Once again, my name is Matt, and welcome back to Let's Play Super Mario Galaxy 2. In the last episode, we started off World 5 with Space Storm Galaxy, then did some cleanup work to collect a few stars in some different worlds. So in this episode, well, uh, there is one star left outside of World 5, so what do you say we go and pick this one up real quick? Off to Starshine Beach Galaxy we go, there is a Kame in orbit, and um... I wonder what it's going to be. Well, I mean, I already know what it is, but for you guys, our first mission is going to be Purple Coin Beach Dash. Yeah, it's one of these missions, but this is no ordinary Purple Coin mission because this one's actually fun. We get to make use of Yoshi, the Dash Pepper, and um, it's kind of like a speedrun-esque mission, so there are Purple Coins all over the beach, but, um, we only have 35 seconds to collect 100 of them, which seems kind of difficult, but the game is really nice about it. There are way more than 100 purple coins, so if you do miss some, which you probably will, since it is pretty difficult to control Yoshi uh, while he's moving so quickly like this and get all of them. Uh, but don't worry, because, like I said, there are far more than 100 purple coins in this mission, so... Even if you do miss a lot, you should still very easily be able to get this star. Plus, you might even have like a second or two to go back. But there we go, we already did it. 100 purple coins, nice and easy. And hopefully, I can actually get this star while I'm still fast. Nope, doesn't look like it. Come on, Yoshi, please work with me, dude. I can like never do this. Well, alright then. I guess we'll just grab it normally. So, there we go. Told you guys that would not take long at all. So now that that is out of the way, um, that should finish up all like the quote-unquote cleanup stars that we have to get, and now we can just focus solely on World 5. I'm pretty excited because World 5 has some interesting galaxies that sort of expand on uh, previous mechanics that we've already seen. So let's not waste any time and just head through this portal. And, uh, you know, we're gonna go back to Space Storm Galaxy, since there is a second star here, and this mission is a lot of fun. You know how I said, like, the first one doesn't really fit this galaxy? Well, the second one does. This is to the top of Top Man's Tower. I'm actually really excited for this one. Um, the title of this mission sounds, like, a little scarier than it actually is. Like, you might imagine there being a boss at the end of this mission, but there really isn't, so it's a little bit misleading as well. Um, the gimmick of this mission, though, is really, really awesome. Like, maybe one of my favorite gimmicks in the entire game, but, as you can see, everything is super fast, unless we ground pound this switch, in which case, everything goes into slow motion. It's so cool. And, like, my favorite part about this is, not everything turns into black and white. Like, there are certain colors that just stay there and pop out, it's really, really cool. Plus, like, the added rain effect in this section is also pretty stinking sweet. But yeah, you definitely want to use those slow motion switches, like, as much as possible, since these areas move very, very quickly, and, uh, getting caught in one of those bubbles, although you can get out of them a lot of the times, if you do get caught in one near the edge, chances are it's just going to push you right off into the, um you know, black holes and stuff like that, so be very, very careful. Now, this mission is pretty short, but this next section can be kind of difficult. You're definitely going to want to make use of the slow motion to help you sort of get past, well, these enemies, of course, but uh, some of the platforms in here don't really um, move in a way that's easy to get up if they're not in slow motion, so... Even when they are in slow motion, too, it still can be kind of tricky to get past them. They just move really, really weird, and, um, the camera angle kind of doesn't make it easier to get past some of them, and, see, stuff like this can happen all the time, so you really just have to get kind of lucky, uh, when you press the slow-mo button, and hopefully you can get past some of them. Otherwise, it is pretty easy to scale this. Like, once you get in that groove, um, there's really nothing stopping you from getting up here super quickly, but it's just finding that groove in the first place that, uh, is somewhat difficult. And, um, that's kind of because World 5 is sort of like where the difficulty curve in this game starts to pick up just ever so slightly. Like, the game doesn't become impossible to play, but you do notice that it does get slightly harder. And, um, 
I gotta say, like, Super Mario Galaxy has a really great difficulty curve. I would almost say it's perfect because even if you're a new player and, like, you've never played a Mario Galaxy game, starting off the game is super easy. And then, like, as you go uh, farther and farther in the game, it gets just a little bit harder and a little bit harder. And uh, by the time you reach this point, you should be fine. So, there you go. Um, now that we got that star, though, I think that does complete everything that we can get in Space Storm Galaxy right now, so... I guess we can explore the rest of World 5, and there is a lot open to us, like... Pretty sure every single galaxy, besides, like, the Hungry Luma, which... We probably could feed and then open up, but... Um... My point is, we've got a lot to choose from, so... Pick a galaxy, any galaxy, guys. Well, I'm gonna pick, and I pick... Uh, this cool looking icy hot one. This is Shiverburn Galaxy. Let's head here and uh, see what kind of nifty stars we can pick up. I don't know. I always like galaxies that combine two elements. This is Prince Picante's Peppery Mood. Kind of like a little tongue twister in the title there. But um, yeah, like I was saying, icy hot galaxies are always like some of my favorite just because the two elements, I don't know, they don't seem like they would go well together, but they do. Plus, this is like a boss mission, which... We haven't had in a very, very long time. Um, oh, we can play as Luigi, but you know what? Given the nature of this mission, and since there's already going to be ice physics, I think I'm going to stay with Mario just because I do not want to be slip-sliding about even more than usual. But, uh, yeah, like I was saying, when was the last time we actually had a boss mission that wasn't, like, a Bowser level or a Comet over a Bowser level or anything like that? I really can't remember. It must have been, like, in one of the earlier worlds. I wonder why they sort of, like, stopped that trend in the later galaxies. Eh, whatever. Not a big deal. I'm just glad they decided to bring it back for World 5. And, um, the boss for this mission is actually really, really creative. So, look forward to that. Anyways, I'm pretty sure I can make this with just, like, two clouds. Because, fun fact about the cloud suit and, like, jumping off of it. So... The cloud power-up is weird in that when you long jump or jump off the cloud in general, it actually gives you more momentum than it normally would. So you can actually jump farther if you jump off of a cloud than if you, like, jump off of the ground, which is kind of bizarre. But, um, I guess it makes sense since you do need to make some really long jumps sometimes when you do have the cloud power-up. Alright, so this section can actually be really, really tricky just because the camera doesn't really help you out in this area and uh, the platforms do move kind of quickly. Like, I don't complain about the camera too much in this game, but there are a couple of areas where it gives you some really weird angles and this is one of them. Other than that though, the camera is like really, really good in this game. Which is not something you can say about a lot of other games. Like, outside of the main Mario series, um, I really can't think of any other platformers that would even come close. Like, you know what, that's gonna be our question for this video. So if you guys know of any, like, really great 3D platformers with tight controls and a really good camera, let me know, because I'm always interested in finding more platformers to play. And, like, I was gonna say maybe the Sonic games, like the 3D ones, have good cameras, but they really don't, so I don't think I can really say that in good confidence. But, um, maybe, like, Banjo-Kazooie and Banjo-Tooie, but, I mean, those are N64-era cameras, and, yeah, those are kind of iffy, so I don't really know if I can say that those were, you know, great cameras in good conscience, but, um, yeah, if you guys know of anything, please let me know. I'm always interested in finding more platformers to play, and, um, maybe I'll check it out, and if it's a cool game, maybe it'll be a future Let's Play. Alright, so now that that is out of the way, um, some advice, be very, very careful on these next few areas since the game likes to trip you up a lot. It makes it seem like you want to go fast through here and use, like, your ice skating ability, but if you do that, chances are you'll just, like, run off the ice or run into enemies and stuff like that. Oh my gosh, please get back on there quick, quick, quick. Oh my gosh, alright, that could have been absolutely terrible. Look at all this crap that is going on, though, like, seriously. Can you give me a break game? Alright, I'm just gonna kill this guy, and uh, then we can just launch the coconuts back at these stupid things and get rid of them. Oh man, jeez. Get used to, like, launching those coconuts back, though, because that's pretty much the mechanic we're gonna be using to uh, finish up the boss in this mission. 
And speaking of which, the boss is up next, and since we already have 6 HP, let's just blast off and take this guy on. And look at him, man. He looks so stinking cool. Like I said, this boss is pretty dang creative. Can also be a little bit difficult, too. So, like I said, your main way of attacking him is going to be reflecting his coconuts back at him. So wait for the ones that are on fire and just uh, spin into him. So what makes this difficult is kind of like the random element to this. Like, you never know when he's going to shoot off a coconut. And then when he does this... You never know where the coconuts are going to appear, so you kind of got to get lucky and uh, hope he shoots one near you. That way you can launch it back into him. So hopefully we have like really good RNG for this fight and we can finish him off quickly. But um, I've had it happen where it just takes me an incredibly long time to take this guy out. Hopefully that doesn't happen. Wow, there we go already. That was like flawless, dude. Holy crap. Except we did get hit, so it wasn't really that flawless, but... If you just ignore that, it was flawless. Anyways, now that he is gone, what do you say? We go and pick up this star. Pick up, pick up the star, Mario. Alright, you know what? We're just gonna do it the old-fashioned way then. There we go. Alright. Um, you know what? I think there is like a hidden star we can get in that galaxy, but... I don't really want to do that. I kind of want to go and explore a new galaxy since there are so many open to us right now. So we might as well explore and get to see some new things. Sounds like a plan to me. Ah, <sighs> okay, let's see. Ooh, what's going on next? Oh, not this again. Come on, man. A letter addressed to the baby Luma has arrived. Oh boy, exciting. There are many kind-hearted people out there who are watching over you. I hope the attached item is helpful. May the stars shine down on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very sweet. Thank you so much. Blah, blah, blah. Wow, there were 50 attached star bits that letter. Cool. No return address, but I hope to get to meet this mysterious person soon. Yeah, Toad, can you just, like, do me a favor and throw those letters out from now on? Because they kind of just impede my progress. Speaking of which, oh, uh, where do we want to go next? Actually, you know what? Let's head down here because Upside Dizzy Galaxy is really, really fun. So, like I said, uh, World 5 expands upon a lot of mechanics we already know about. So, we've seen, like, the gravity platform before, and this is a walk on the weird side. But, um, this galaxy and this mission in particular is going to expand on that even more. And, uh, flush out that idea, do some cool, interesting things, and, um... It's a really fun galaxy, so we get to play with gravity a little bit more. This mission is pretty easy, though. Shouldn't really take us too long. And, um, yeah, the entire thing is, like, in 2D, although... Doing a 3D mission with, like, different gravity planes would kind of be hard. Like, have they actually done that in this game before? I don't think they have. I'm trying to think. Like, I know they've done a lot of crazy things in this game, but, um... Usually when the gravity like shifts to different areas like this, um, it's always in 2D, like, unless you count, um, ah, what was the name of the galaxy that looked like a house? Can't believe I already forgot this. Um, Flipsville? I mean, I don't know if you can really count that, though. It did have changing gravity, but it was only, like, when you sort of went to a different side of the level, so... I don't really know. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. It doesn't really matter. Like, I'm really, really tired, guys. Um, this week has been very, very taxing on me. Like, I've had a lot of stuff to deal with, um, in real life. And am I stuck here? Can I, like, get out of here, please? Like, what is even going on? Um, alright, there we go. Thank goodness. But yeah, like, I've had a lot of stuff going on, uh, in real life, I guess you could say. Um, so I've been getting up super early every day. Uh, coming home and then working on videos and um, getting way less sleep than I normally do so I'm really really tired and I honestly just cannot wait for this week to be over uh, so things can go back to normal because um, I'm definitely overworking myself just a little bit and like pushing myself super hard to stay consistent with videos and stuff like that and I, I really I kind of don't even want to say that because like now it just sounds like I'm complaining, and I'm not really complaining. I'm just, like, stating how I feel right now, at least. Like, uh, I don't know. 
Um, but yeah, like, I shouldn't really complain about, like, you know, recording videos and stuff like that, considering I play video games as, like, my main job, like, there's really nothing bad about that, it's just that I've got a whole lot of other things going on, messing with my schedule and, uh, cutting into some rest time that I kind of desperately need right now, but, uh, whatever, I'm gonna suck it up and, uh, hopefully get these videos out the rest of the week and, um, then we'll be done. Speaking of being done, though, guess what? The star for this mission is right over here. This one's pretty easy to collect. Um, that's not how you do it, though. You kind of want to do it that way, but wait for it to switch, and then, uh, jump, like, right before it does, and bam, there you go. You will get flung right into the star. Nice and easy. Sweet. Like I said, guys, short little mission, but a really fun galaxy. And, uh, what does that bring us up to? Star number 73. Not bad. Um, what's next? Let's see. Oh, wow, really? There's already going to be a comet appearing over Shiverburn Galaxy. Hmm, interesting. We'll pick that up soon enough, I guess. But, um, you know what? I think this is a good place to end off the video. So if you guys enjoyed this part, like rating would be greatly appreciated. If you want to see more, consider subscribing. But once again, guys, my name is Matt. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.